welcome everybody. So my name is Holly Bryant. I'm one of the registered dietitians for El Rio and I have a wonderful assistant today. Hi, my name is Sue. I'm an American Vista working with El Rio and I'll be helping out with Holly today. Yay. So Sue did all of our shopping, which is super helpful. <laughs> So today uh, we are doing a class from the Cooking Matters curriculum. And then just as a reminder, all of you have the recipes, but in case you're watching this, not in real time, you can always find the recipes on cookingmatters.org. And the recipe we're gonna cook together today is called noodles with peanut sauce. And you'll find that on their website. So noodles with peanut sauce, I'm really excited about this one. We're gonna talk about a few things that go along with this recipe. So one of the things we're gonna talk about is having pantry staples. So having things around your kitchen that don't go bad, that you can use in all kinds of different recipes. Uh, so noodles with peanut sauce, I've got all of our, our ingredients out here. We've got noodles, here's my vegetables. I used frozen vegetables. We have soy sauce, we have apple cider vinegar, peanut butter, and then I have some extras here. So I sort of pre-measured everything, so it's gonna come together pretty quickly on my end. But I know that I like to have really crunchy things on this dish, so I also am gonna add some peanuts. I just have some roasted peanuts there. I have some lime wedges, and then I have some chilies. I like things spicy. And then I'm also gonna add some minced garlic into my sauce. All right, so pantry staples. So some things that we tend to always have on hand, peanut butter, apple cider vinegar, soy sauce, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of sugar into the sauce. Those are things that we tend to always have. And it's really good to have pantry staples because you can stock up on this stuff when it's on sale and then you can just keep it around and it won't go bad. Uh, and then you can make all kinds of different meals with it. So it makes meals really quick. So if we've got pasta and we've got our sauce ingredients, we can make uh, noodles with peanut sauce pretty quickly on a weeknight. The frozen vegetables also make it really quick. We can just put those in the microwave, cook those, and add it all together. So it makes for some quick meals if we've got some good things on hand. And then it's also easy to sub things in and out. So if a recipe, for example, calls for quinoa or barley, but that's not stuff we always have on hand, if we have some dried rice or dried beans, we might be able to sub those things in and instead of what the recipe calls for and still have a really good meal. So, all right, I also added tofu. I added tofu to this recipe, uh, but you can add chicken, you can add pork, you can add any sort of protein that you want, or no protein. We've got our peanuts and our peanut butter, which is a good source of protein there, so we don't have to add anything with that. So let's get started with our recipe, so noodles with peanut sauce. So we're gonna make the sauce first. I pre-cooked my pasta, so my pasta is ready, and it's just waiting for me back there. So uh, if you haven't done that, you can get your pasta started right now so that that's cooking while we're getting our sauce together. This is only gonna take about five minutes. Our pasta might only take about five minutes. So it comes together really quickly. All right, first thing on our recipe is peanut butter. So we have one quarter cup peanut butter. I already measured mine out. Here's my one quarter cup. So I'm gonna put that in my bowl and I've got this nice little spatula. I don't know if you can see this. I call this my peanut butter spatula. So it just is a nice size, not only for getting the peanut butter out of the measuring cup, but also for getting the peanut butter out of the jar at the end. I want all my peanut butter. So peanut butter in our bowl. I'm gonna get every last bit of that in there. All right. What's next on our ingredients is warm water. So I saved a little bit of my pasta water when I drained my pasta. So I'm just gonna put one third cup of water in with my peanut butter. We're gonna mix that around so the peanut butter warms up a little bit. It'll make it mixing a lot easier. And then one quarter cup soy sauce. So here's my one quarter cup soy sauce. I'm gonna put that in, keep mixing that up. Two tablespoons apple cider vinegar. All right, here's my apple cider vinegar. I've got my tablespoon down here. We're gonna add in two tablespoons apple cider vinegar. Here we go. There's one, and there's two. Next, we have four teaspoons of sugar. So I measured out my four teaspoons already. I've got it in here. So I'm gonna add that into my sauce. 
And that's all we've got for the sauce. So now we're just gonna mix it up. And I don't know what yours is looking like, but mine is looking a little bit, not quite as nicely mixed as I want. So I'm actually gonna get a whisk because I think that will work better. And it'll help dissolve our sugar. Sue's gonna get me a whisk. My wonderful assistant is on it. Thank you, Sue. All right. So if I use my whisk, I can just get in there a little bit better and I can break up that peanut butter. So it becomes a nice, smooth sauce. So I don't know if you can see that, it smells really delicious. You can sort of see I've got a nice blended sauce there. Hopefully I won't drop. <laughs> All right. So from here, we cooked our pasta already. So a note about the pasta that we're using. So I'm using whole grain pasta. Uh, and, you know, at the stores, they're still trying to catch up to everybody's uh, pasta buying surge. So they didn't have regular spaghetti. They had angel hair. So Sue got the whole wheat angel hair pasta. So that's what we're going to use but you can really use any noodles that you want and that you have on hand. Uh, the whole grain pasta has a lot more of that fiber in there. So that's gonna be good for us to have. All right, so we cooked our pasta, we combined our sauce. I'm gonna put my red pepper flakes in here. I like things a little bit spicy. Just put a few in there, mix that up. All right. So my vegetables, we're using frozen vegetables. We talked a little bit about this in the last class about using frozen fruits or frozen vegetables. And I really like using that kind of stuff because you can buy it when it's on sale, you can put it in the freezer. You don't have to use it all at once. You can just use it uh, when you're ready for it. It stays good for a really long time. So Sue got us the broccoli carrots, sugar snap peas, and water chestnuts, which is a really good mix for what we're gonna make today. So I just opened my bag of my frozen vegetables. I put it in my bowl. So I've got my vegetables in here. I put a little bit of water in there. And then I popped it in the microwave. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna microwave it just a little bit more so they're warm, but they're already thawed and cooked. So it makes it pretty easy. Here, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you, Sue. We'll just put that in the microwave for about three to five minutes. I usually, I put mine in for three minutes. I mix it around, make sure that they're not in one big frozen clump. And then I pull it out, I might put it back in for another couple minutes just to make sure it's all thawed and that it is the right temperature that we want it to be. There's gonna be a little bit of extra water at the end uh, of at the bottom of the bowl of my vegetables. So I'm just gonna drain that out uh, before I add everything together. And then we're pretty much done. So we've got, I, I used a nice big bowl for my sauce. So now I can just put everything right into uh, my bowl and then we'll have one big nice uh, one bowl meal which is makes our weeknight dinners so much better the other thing that I'm gonna add so I bought some tofu bought some extra firm tofu so we're gonna I'm gonna add this to mine but again you can add chicken you can add pork you can add any uh, protein source that you want yeah Sue's gonna show us the tofu so I pre-cooked this because it took a little bit of time I like my tofu to be really crunchy. So I just put it in a pan. I have some spray canola oil. I just sprayed the canola oil in there and then I just cooked it for about 10 minutes. I am gonna add a little bit of garlic. The other thing you can add, so I just bought, I have this minced, pre-minced garlic. So I just added a little bit of that. If you have ginger, pickled ginger, uh, fresh ginger, you can grate the ginger in there as well, and that's really, really good. All right, so Sue's gonna add our tofu. Yum. Yum. And I'm gonna start mixing everything. So I might let my tofu sit in there a little bit so it gets the it gets covered in the sauce, because that'll just make it really delicious. All right, the vegetables should be done, Sue. You wanna pull those out. And now I've got my pasta. So I cooked my pasta and I drained it already. That's what it looks like when it's cooked. And I'm gonna add that into my bowl. All 
All right. And then, the yeah, draining the veggies. Thank you, Sue. All right. So while she's doing that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the other topic of the day. So we talked about pantry staples. Thank you, Sue. And the other thing that I want to talk about is menu planning. So menu planning, there's lots of benefits to menu planning, and there's also some challenges to menu planning. So some of the benefits to menu planning, it can save some money. So when we sit down and we make a little bit of a plan for our week and we make a grocery list, and then we go to the grocery store with that list, it helps us know exactly what we need. Rather than sort of walking up and down the aisles thinking, oh, what do I wanna have this week? This looks good, this looks good, and just sort of putting things in your cart at whim can make your grocery bill sort of climb without really realizing it. So if we've got a plan for the week and a grocery list and we go to the store with a plan and we know exactly what we need uh, to get for that week and for the recipes. So another benefit to menu planning is that you're not buying unneeded things. So I call it the science experiment in the back of your fridge, right? So maybe you're like, okay, I, I cauliflower's on sale. I think I'm gonna get a couple of cauliflower, but maybe you don't have a plan for it. And it's Wednesday, you forgot that you had the cauliflower in the fridge and it's growing mold, right? And you didn't have a plan for it. And now that's money that you had spent that you're not using. So having a plan and having a list can help you buy only what you need and not buy things that you don't need. So it also really helps you maintain healthy meals. So if you've got a little bit of a plan, then hopefully you're going out to eat maybe a little less because you know, oh yeah, I've got that thing prepared in the, for, for dinner tonight. I don't have to stop at uh, a restaurant and pick things up because I've already got that planned. Uh, so you're eating out less. So there's also some challenges to menu planning. So menu planning uh, does take a little bit of a time, right? You might be thinking, oh, my family's really busy. I don't know when I'm gonna sit down and have the time to do the menu planning. But I think about it as really it's, it's the same amount of time. It's just that you're spending the time a little bit differently. So when you menu plan, you might spend maybe 20 or 30 minutes uh, in the beginning of the week with your family, trying to figure out what you'd like to have, uh, what, you, what you don't want to have, what stuff do you have in the pantry or the fridge that needs to be used, and putting that into your menu plan. And that might save you time later in the week for maybe instead of, you're going to the grocery store once, if you weren't planning, you might be going to the grocery store a couple times during the week thinking, oh, I want to eat this, this sounds good, but I don't have this. And then you're making these runs to the grocery store. So it can save you time in that way. Uh, also, it makes grocery shopping a breeze. You've got a list, you go in, you get out, and then you're done. Uh, so it just makes it go a, a lot faster. Uh, I know some families might be thinking, well, I'm really, or my family's really busy. Like, I don't know, you know, not everybody sits down at dinner at the same time. We have sports, I work late, there's busy days. Well, menu planning can help you account for all of that busyness. So if there's days when you know, well, only half the family is going to be at home, or maybe there's days where you know that it's a sports day and you're gonna be home late, then you can account for that. So maybe you're only making half the recipe, or maybe you're saving leftovers for the family that's coming home later, or maybe if you have a really busy day, you just plan, oh, that's the day we're just gonna have sandwiches for dinner. We're gonna do something a little bit more, more quick and not something as involved so that you can have dinner ready um, sooner. So you wanna account for everybody's schedule in there. Um, and it can really, you know, decrease food waste. So you're not making more food than you need, accounting for like who's going to be eating and, and when. Uh, so another thing that I hear a lot from families is that they've got picky eaters. So they don't want to do a menu plan because they have family members that maybe have allergies that have to account for, or maybe some family members that don't like certain things or don't like a lot of things. Um, and that's okay if you're picky. Uh, but having a menu plan is a really good way to involve those picky eaters uh, into the meals. So really uh, asking those picky eaters, you know, what are their things that they would like to have? What's their favorite meals? And putting those favorite meals maybe once or twice in the week so that they know they've got a meal coming that they're going to enjoy. And it's always really nice to have safe, I call them safe foods for those picky eaters. So it's really nice with, uh, with especially with young ones, when they're trying new things, new, new things can be really scary. It's nice to have one or two things on the table that they can count on that they're familiar with. Maybe that's just bread or crackers or hot dog pieces or mac and cheese. Uh, and they can have those things along with some of the new things if they're ready to try them at that point. Um, and they will be ready to try them eventually, so don't worry. 
picky eating is a really normal part of childhood. Um, so involving the family in the meal plan uh, really gets them more involved actually in the meals and makes them more likely to try new things. Uh, and you can always make adaptable meals. So if you've got lots of different taste buds in the family, you've got some allergies, some things you need to work around, having meals where uh, the family is serving themselves and so that they can leave out ingredients that they don't want and they can add extra ingredients that they like. So tacos or nachos is a good example of that. So maybe somebody doesn't want to have tomatoes on their tacos, but they like to have extra lettuce or any of those sort of variations. Um, it's a really good way to get around that. Uh, so another fun thing to do is just to make sure that uh, you're putting in family favorites. So uh, some families will even have a little menu plan on the refrigerator where they sort of keep track of what are their family favorites. I call that the meal master list. So you just sort of keep a laundry list of the meals that work for your family that you know everybody likes. Um, they're meals that come together pretty easily for you. That's a good way to sort of incorporate that menu planning. Um, you know, and then also something fun to do is have theme nights. So Taco Tuesday, pizza on Friday, and cookingmatters.org has a lot of really good recipes actually for mini pizzas. We do that a lot in our family cooking class. And that's another good thing where people and kids can put the, put the toppings on the pizza that they like and leave the toppings off that they don't like. So it's pretty fun to make it sort of a la carte that way. Um, and everybody gets to eat what they like. And then you can also sort of check the weather. So especially, you know, in Tucson, uh, in our spring and our fall, we can have days that are a little bit more cooler and, a little, and days some, that are hotter. So it's nice to make recipes that sort of match the weather, right? If it's a little bit chillier, um, sometimes it's nice to have soup on the menu. If it's going to be a really hot day, maybe you know that you don't want to have a meal that's going to keep you in a hot kitchen for a really long time, or you're going to be cooking or baking something, and you can adapt that and make your menu so that it sort of fits the season and fits how much time you want to spend um, in the kitchen. So those are uh, the menu plan ideas, and I'll give you a close-up of our meal. It looks pretty good. I'm excited about it. We've got lots of veggies, we've got some sauce, we have our tofu in there. There we go. Noodles with peanut sauce. Mm -hmm.